because you put air in it, right? So it's an area foam. But you know, so I, I'm going to say because I, I, I'm, I'm going to look that one up too. But I'm going to go with Woodwind on that as well. Um, so the one we haven't, we didn't get yet. I'll stick that in here. Saxophones. Adolfo Sax was an instrument maker, and in, he's from Belgium in the 19th century. And this guy liked to make musical instruments. And the most famous of his instruments are what are called the saxophones. And just like the SATB, you have soprano sax, alto sax, tenor sax, baritone sax, bass sax, contrabass sax, double contrabass saxophone. Why? Because the soprano sax plays really high and the contrabass saxophone plays really low. How many of you have ever seen a Harry Potter movie? Any of the Harry Potter movies? I guess a better question is who hasn't seen any Harry Potter? Really? No Harry Potters? You should see, you should see the look on our face right now. It's like, no? Well, if you would have, and those of you who have can attest to this, one of the things, there's always a band. There's like a school band because the stories take place at a school, right? And so they got a band. But the funny thing is, is that the instruments and the band are always really weird, right? One of the horns would have like four bells on it and all this stuff. Well, those instruments, believe it or not, most of them came from designs from Aldo Sachs, who made that. So you may think that this is all part of the fantasy world of J.K. Rowling, who wrote the book. But in terms of the instruments, a lot of times, those were real instruments. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Okay. What am I missing? Am I missing anything? Yes. So, same thing with clarinet. There's bass clarinet. There's E-flat clarinet. There's a soprano, which is like a soprano clarinet. So a lot of these instruments, the clarinet, the flute, the saxophones, they can have these different sizes. A bassoon is a bassoon. The oboe is the oboe. There's no soprano oboe and there's no bass bassoon. There could be, but in terms of, of an orchestra with music or parts to play, you're not going to see it. Alright, so, percussion. Timpani. Who said timpani? Timpani. Alright, so, since you said it, explain it. What's a timpani? Big kettle drum. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there's one thing about a timpani that makes them extremely important. Do you know what that is? Anyone? Who can help me out? Help her out. Okay, they're playing the bass part because they're large drums, so the notes are low. But there's something that's really important about a timpani, and, and it's, it's a test question. Okay? A little bit more specific. You're close. Okay? They are a pitched instrument. Timpani, modern timpanis have pedals. So they're actually playing specific notes. You can play melodies on timpani. And you can change the notes. So a timpani is a melodic or pitched instrument. And that's critically important. And you can hear that during the young person's guide. Now, today's Wednesday, yes? Alright, between now and Monday, I want you to go on YouTube and listen to the young person's guide to the orchestra again. But now, after having gone through this lecture, see if it's as complicated as it was. Because what you're going to hear, you're going to have little melodies and themes. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. Let me see where I am on my clock. Okay. What you want to do is to listen to how these sections work. All right, so when you have percussion instruments, you have two different groups. You have the pitched instruments, marimba, xylophone, 
chimes, bells, vibraphone. All of these instruments have specific notes. When we talk about marimba, xylophone, chimes, bells, xylophone, or uh, vibraphone, they're all laid out like a piano keyboard. Except the piano, you play with your hands. These instruments, you play with mallets. The timpani, you play with like a, like a, a, a lamb's wool, bald mallet. On the other end of the spectrum of, of percussion, you have non-pitch instruments. Instruments that don't have a specific note. That would be your snare drum, your bass drum. You would have cymbals and gongs. You would have pieces of wood. It could be a wood block. It could be a, in, in the piece you'll see castanets. You'll, there's one play, there's three wood, uh, uh, wood slaps. So some percussion instruments have a specific pitch. Timpani, marimba, xylophone, vibes, bells, chimes. Other times you have the drums. Now, what's a drum? It's a piece of animal skin stretched over an open hold log. Membrana foam. You got an E. I can look that up. I know I'm spelling it wrong. Membrana foam. Why? Because it's a membrane. Again, this isn't this isn't rocket science. All right. So, what you find in music? Remember how we talked about a beat being the smallest unit of rhythmic measure? Well, in music, you have motives and themes. A motive is like a beat. You have this little small melodic idea and in Beethoven's case, da 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 those four notes, that's a motive. When you put motives together, you get a you get a phrase. When you put phrase together you get a theme. Think of it this way. What would happen if I put all the words in the class together and never had any breaks and continuously talk without any spaces, any breaths, or anything as if it was all one topic? Couldn't do it. That was a phrase. What if I then went back to my original idea? What if? What if I said, talked about this? Then I said, well, wait a minute, what if I talked about that? In the language, I kept saying, what if? I said it three times. That's the motive. What if? Could be. Might be. If I put the what if, could be, might be, that's a phrase. We speak in phrases to each other. Hey, man, what's happening? Not much. Not, I gotta go to class. That's cool. What are you doing after class? I don't know. Text me. Those are a series of phrases. But if somebody calls you and say, "Hey, man, what are you doing?" Oh, man, I gotta do this and this and this, and then I gotta go to that. I gotta go pick up to this, and I gotta go. Work, and then I gotta go to this and that. What is that? That's the thing. Why? Because you just gave them a complete description of what your whole afternoon has to be. And what is that? That's the theme of what I'm doing this afternoon. Does that make sense to you? How many of you does that not make sense to? That's what's happening musically. All of that stuff is complicated. It's really just conversation. The flute is talking to the clarinets. And the clarinets essentially are just repeating back what she said over here in the flute. And then, well, wait a minute now, the woodwinds Okay, well now the brass want to have some of that. Let me chime in on that. 
when you listen to the young person's guide again, think of it, guys, like you're in a barbershop. A piece, that, that piece is nothing more than a barbershop conversation. Ladies, beauty pop. Just a bunch of ladies talking about stuff. It could be shoes, it could be hair color. How many of you ladies have ever colored your hair? Kind of obvious for some of us, right? <laughs> right. Why? Something different? Thought I'd do this, you know, whatever. And when you did it, were you talking to your hairdresser? Of course. Did you talk to her before? No, you didn't. You just went, I'm doing it. Okay? Okay. Music is conversation. Because music is emotion. Music is all about that. Okay, questions. Anybody got any questions? Did I help start to demystify things? Did I say it in a way that makes sense to y'all? Yes? I'm seeing some head nods. And you know what? It doesn't make any difference. You can be listening to Nevada and all the concepts I talked about. It's the same way in that. What's the biggest Nirvana song? Smells like Teen Spirit. What is it? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, it's like those four chords. It starts at after he, at, at, after. Kurt plays that. What to do? He goes back and plays it again. In case you missed it. That's the motive of the piece. You can't miss it. Most pop songs that you listen to today, they put that motive in your face. And they play it over and over and over and over. So start to listen to it. And it won't be nearly as complicated. We're taking... You know, I, I know I'm taking the magic out of the app, but that's okay. That's the purpose. Because once you know how to do it, you'll be happy. Okay, remember, no food or drinking here anymore. Sorry. Anyone else? Questions? Thoughts? Got something? Should be. If you haven't read it up through Chapter 5, you should. So, the, which is, I think, essentially Part 1. Let me, uh, let me, let me make sure that we're in unit... Yeah, yeah. If you haven't read the first five chapters, you need to have that done by Monday. All right. Have a great weekend, all. Everybody, be safe. Thanks. <laughs> Please. <laughs> right, but real big. Can you stand next to it? That's the double bass. Yeah, that's the double. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, and you understand how, why how it hooks up to the baritone voice of the human voice. You know, it's it's you know for most of you that are coming into this class, it's just a matter that you never had anyone explain this stuff to you before. Mm -hmm. And and I try to make it in terms of your life that you already understand, and it just makes it easy.